All right, next video. This is the video about how to actually start your own project now. So I expect you to have Creator Companion, uh, this fancy little thing right here. Uh, the next thing I expect you to have is Unity. So make sure the Creator Companion will show you how to actually install Unity and that type of stuff. It'll show you which SDK ver or which version of Unity you'll need. I expect you to have Blender, some type of Blender. Um, if you don't know how to install Cats, just search up a video about how to install Cats. I use the unofficial Cats. Uh, one, they'll use the latest version, or unsupported version of Cats, basically your unofficial version of Cats. They'll use the actual latest version of Blender. Um, but yeah. Uh, let's talk about how to actually do these things. So first thing, we'll make a new project. So you create a new project. Call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this a video tutorial, right? And make sure it's the Unity 2022 or whatever that's the latest version of Unity that VRChat or whatever avatar maker you're using, right? With the Creator SDK, you have a couple things in here. We'll get back to this later, but the things I like is Gesture Manager and Avatar 3.0 Manager, but you can use whatever you want in here. Um, we don't need to worry about that right now. Right now we're worrying about the very basics. And then from there you can just open the project and it will open it up. Blender. So whenever you make a new Blender, you'll see this. Basically, you'll see everything right here. We just click and drag, so left click and drag, hit delete on keyboard, and it'll give us a brand new scene right here. Um, let's talk about some things in Blender real quick. So if you go into Edit, go to Preferences, go to System, make sure you go into CUDA, so make sure you use your GPU if you're... GPU stronger or your CPU if your CPU stronger. The undo steps, make sure you turn this up to max 256. So whenever you hit control Z, it's not set to 32. So you can only go back 32 different times. Because every single time you click is taking a step. Me personally, underneath the key maps, whenever I do spacebar, that is my search. You can set it to play like it is on default. It is up to you. Um, there's a couple other things in here you can do. So like if you don't have the middle mouse, you can do the alt middle mouse and stuff like that. Um, underneath the viewport, make sure you set it to dark mode, please. Or sorry, the interface? Was it interface or themes? I forget. Yeah, presets, dark. You can set it to blender dark. I highly recommend that. Uh, I believe that is it. Yeah. Cool. All right. So a couple things real quick in Blender. Scrolling in and out is scrolling in and out. Middle mouse will turn it. Uh, numpads will actually turn you to certain points in here. Uh, certain points over here. You can see on the top right, it, it moves you to the different viewpoints of the area. You had the viewport mode, so like, for example, uh, if we add a mesh, like a cone or a cube. Also, feel free to pause. If I'm going too fast for you, you can be like, all right, what do you do here? Then just keep on going, right? So we had the different viewpoints, like it would be in the textures wise, what you would actually see shader wise. You can just see the actual mesh as it is. And then the wireframe mode you can see through and also the see-through mode, the actual x-ray so you can see through. You can do the see-through mode through the actual mesh stuff as well. Gizmos, I usually turn on statistics so you can actually see the mesh and or the polygon counts and triangle counts over here. Very useful things. Anyways, so we'll get back to Blender here in just a second. For now, we're going to come on over back into Unity. So with Unity, open up over here on the other screen. With Unity, right, you have the main window here. Again, middle mouse click will actually move here. Right click will move your actual camera scene, the actual turning. The way I move around in Unity is by using my arrow keys. You can scroll in and out to actually move the actual speed as you look around. 
E and Q to go up and down through here. Or you can just turn, middle mouse click and turn, move around like that as well. If you want to center on something, you can just double click on it and it will center in on that. And then you can just scroll in and out using that. And Blender, if you hit the uh, period on your numpad, it will center in on that object as well. All right, so back on over here, we will need to import the SBOT. So you can either click and drag that Unity file onto there, or you can just double click and it will show you the actual files locations of, hey, I'm going to import these things inside these folders. Is this where you want it to do? It'll say new. If it's new, it'll show like a refresh icon if it's going to update something. Or it'll just show like, hey, this is what's already inside the package. I don't need to update it. I'll keep the SBOT in the description as well. You can just go and download that and then double click it to open it or just click and drag it to the project folder where you want it to actually open up at. Anyways, with the SBOT, you notice whenever we import the SBOT, it comes with its own scene, comes with its own prefab, or the FBX, and it comes with the textures and stuff as well, and also the materials. So these round things are materials. Perfect. So you can either click and drag the SBOT onto here, the actual scene, and it will come with the stuff already on there, the materials already applied, and etc. For now, I'm going to show you real quick how to do this if you didn't actually have the scene. So let's say you didn't have a scene at all. Uh, first thing you need to do whenever you import a new FBX is you go over to Models. Make sure you turn Legacy Blend Shapes on. Make sure you turn Read Write on. You'll go over to Rig. You'll, it'll be set to Generic. So you just come over here and then set it to Humanoid. Hit Apply. And then materials, you can set these to legacy if you actually want to do that. We won't worry about that for now. Um, from here, we'll go over to rig. I'll explain that material stuff here in a little bit. But for now, the main point thing, we'll head over to the rig. You'll actually see the actual bones in here. So like, hey, there's no chest. We'll need to click and drag the chest onto here. Or like if there's an upper chest, you'll see the upper chest. Shoulders, arms, elbows, wrists, and stuff as well. Head, make sure there's no jawbone on here. Or else VRChat's SDK will keep your jaw open for some strange reason. So you should just keep those off. Eyes, I didn't see much of an effect if it had the eye bone or not. Head and neck will be on there as well. Uh, quick, easy way, if there's something on there that you don't on there, just click on this dot, double click on it, and then just hit delete, and it'll just remove it. You can also click this dot over here if you want to do it the long way, like neck, you can search for stuff as well as in here, or you can just click and drag it right onto there. Whichever way is easiest for you. Once you got all your mapping done with the bone work, you can come over here to muscle settings and check to make sure your avatar moves as it should uh, with the actual bones. Now you got your FBX ready. This is the armor mesh with the armature. This is the FBX file, right? You're going to click and drag that onto the actual scene. From here, you will see the couple things inside the hierarchy. You can expand these out to actually look at them. You have the mesh, and then you have the armature, right? With the armature, or sorry, the actual mesh, sorry. You will see the materials. You will see the lightings. You will see the... The probes, if there's probes, and you don't need to worry about the probes. Um, let's talk about the materials first. So, let's say you had the textures, and you don't have the materials here at all. Um, to create a new material, you just right-click, Create, and then right here will be Materials. You can name the material whatever you want, so I'm just going to name this uh, Spam Bunch of Text. I'm going to put this over here in Autodesk because I like Autodesk more than standard. Albedo is your normal textures. So here, I'm just going to click and drag this. Actually, there's two ways to apply the material. So you can click and drag this onto here, and it will apply it. You can click and drag this onto your avatar, and it will apply this. You can click the dot to search for the actual material. There's a bunch of different ways you can actually do it. 
uh, just showing you the, all the different options. Whenever it gets to be more efficient, you will find your way of being like, hey, this will be the faster way since I have so many materials. Or just click and drag it onto there. Or, hey, I want it to be on this specific element over here. Sometimes a mesh will have multiple materials on it. So I'm just showing you the different options as well. Anyways, as you see, I'm going to just go ahead and throw next things on. So the next thing we'll throw on is the emissive. So I'll click here and I'll throw on an emissive layer. And you'll see the actual emissive layer show. It shows over the actual um the actual albedo of the texture file. file. You want to see it without the actual texture file. It looks just straight white. As you apply it, it looks like that. Cool. Metallic is the metallic layer. It does it the metallics already for you. The normal map is the actual normal map. So, for example, if I look at this sideways, it gives that depth look to it. So if I look at it sideways, it has just a flat look to it. And as soon as I apply a normal map, it gives it that feeling that it's like bumps. It gives the textures. So you see like these actual scar marks and stuff like that. Those things go away with the normal map. It gives it that depth feel. Cool. Alrighty. So now you got your avatar in here. Let's talk about a couple things. Let's say, for example, I want to make... A toggle for it. Or sorry, the first thing I need to do is put an SDK on it. So, on the avatar SDK, you got to log in. Uh, you'll have to add an SDK. So we'll type in VRC, or we'll click on the actual default avatar, add component, and you type in VRC. You'll see a an VRC avatar descriptor. That is what we want to add. If you do not see this dot here, you click this little gizmo right here, and you can actually see there is the dot. This will show you things like, hey, there's particles. Hey, there's the camera system back there. It'll show you all those gizmos. You can actually toggle the lighting here as well, so you can preview the lighting. You can also toggle the skybox as well. You can also change the actual shading modes here up here as well. And you can see audio and scenes and stuff like that. Fun stuff. Anyways, the main thing we need to do is click and drag this orb up to a point where we think our viewpoint should be. This is basically like that camera system. This is where we will see outside our avatar. Now just know VRChat has a head chop uh, system where it will, on your side locally, it will grab your head bone. So this head bone right here, and it will scale it down to almost practically zero. So this will be your viewport. If you actually look down at your mesh, you will see that. Uh, but for everybody else, it'll keep it on as default as what it was. That is what VRChat does default, so you don't have to worry about that. Lip sync. Uh, if you have on this mesh, sometimes there'll be a blend shape right here, and I'll show you ooh, ee, ah, you, and that type of stuff. You click auto detect it'll automatically detect hey there's those blend shapes here's the actual um here is uh, whatever it is it's like blend shapes it'll be the mesh if it doesn't detect you just throw it in there and then from there you can select the actual blend shapes right anyways i look if there's any eye bones in here you can throw them in here and then you can give them their rotations and if there's any blinks, you can give it by the blend shape. Or if there's the bones for the eyelids, you can throw them in there. Normally people do it by a blend shape. Cool. And then the last thing, the playable layer. So, or two more things actually. We'll talk about the playable layer and then the menu stuff. So, base. Base is the locomotion, so your walking animations. Additive is like the idle uh, stuff, the stuff where you're not moving. Gestures is your hand shapes. So if you're on Quest or you're on the uh, Vive ones, that's where the gestures come into play. Uh, the FX side, I don't know too much about action, so I won't speak on that until I learn more about that. The FX side is the actual animations here as well. 
and then you have your special things for your locomotions, the um, moving stuff. So if your hand, um, so if you see like, if I grab the actual wrist right now and move it, it moves the mesh and stuff as well. But the IK is what grabs the other bones and makes sure that they stay connected together as they move around. That's the smart part about the IK and stuff as well. Anyways, uh, footsteps. So if you want to do that walking locomotion, you check these on. If you don't want to use the walking locomotion and you want to just slide like a brick as you slide around, you can toggle those off. And then the menu and parameters. So if you need a menu, you click create. You go over here, you go to avatars, and you create parameters and menus. For now, we won't worry about that until we make the actual animations. We'll get to that on the next video. Uh, but yeah, that's the core basics. Uh, actually, mm, yeah, next video. But yeah.